Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a SOC 2 type 1 and type 2 report. So in this session, I'm going to cover both types 1 and 2 for SOC 2 at the same time. And what I decided to do is show you first SOC 1 for, for a particular paragraph, then I will switch to type 2 and show you the difference. And I hope by doing so, it will reinforce what you already know or clarify if you had any confusion about the difference between type 1 and type 2 for a SOC 2 report. As, as we are working through this list, we went through the system description for SOC 1, SOC 2, and cybersecurity risk management. We looked at the assertions or assertion of management, which is for SOC 1, SOC 2. Both of these items, the description and the assertions, are integrated or they are attached to the report itself. So if you can follow the report, then you have a basic strong understanding about what is SOC 1, what is SOC 2, type 1, type 2. And this is the purpose of a SOC report, is to summarize everything about SOC 1, type 1, SOC 2, type 2. Now I did not, in these reports, I kept out the inclusive method, the car, the inclusive method, the carve out method, because we'll be covering those, those separately. Also, these reports are for a clean opinion. We will cover something other than clean opinion later. But if you can follow, if you're just nodding your head, yes, this makes sense, I understand this, it's a good sign that you have a basic understanding. So again, we're working with the SOC 2, Type 1, and a Type 2 report. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with the title, you should have a title and the word independent should be there because SOC is an attestation engagement. An attestation engagement would require that the auditor is independent, therefore lends more credibility to the report because an attestation is a form of an audit. In an audit, the auditor has to be independent. Then the address C to KLM service organization. Then we talk about the scope of the engagement. We have examined, notice here examined, uh, the KLM service organization accompanying description um, as of date. This is type 1. Why type 1? Because as of a date, not a period of time, based on the criteria for a description of the service organization system in DC section 200, description criteria for a description of a service organization in SOC 2 report, AICPA description criteria, description criteria, once again, the description criteria will be attached and the, suit and the suitability of the design as of a date. All in all, <laughs> we're looking at a description and the description of the controls and the suitability of the control to provide reasonable assurance that KLM service commitment and system requirement were achieved based on the trust service criteria. Relevant to security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. Set forth in TCP section 100, whatever they are found in the trust services criteria. That's the scope. This is exactly what we're doing. We're going to be, we, we have examined the description and the criteria as stated in those locations, the description as coming from the trust services criteria. Now, this is a type one. If we look at a type two, what's going to be different in type two is operating effectiveness of control, and it's for a period of time. That's the difference between the two. So we add to the description. It's for a period of time, suitability of control for a period of time, plus operating effectiveness of control all for a period of time. Now, what is the service organization's responsibilities? The KLM is responsible for its service commitment and system requirement for designing, implementing, and operating effective controls within the system to provide reasonable assurance that KLM services and commitment were service commitment and system requirements were achieved. Also, KLM has provided the accompanying assertion, so it's provided by the management, about the description and the suitability of the design of control 
KLM is also responsible for preparing the description and assertion, including completeness, accuracy, and method of presentation of the description and assertion, providing the services covered by the description, selecting the applicable trust service criteria, and stating the related control in the description, and the identifying risks that threaten the achievement of services commitment and system requirements. So simply put, KLM has given us all the information that we are that we are passing a judgment on. This is a type one. And a type two, what we add is, it's not only about the description and suitability of control, we're also gonna be testing the operating effectiveness of these control. When it comes to the service auditor's responsibility, well, our, opin our responsibility is to express an opinion. That's the service job responsibility on the description and the suitability of a con of the controls stated in the description based on our examination. Then we discuss how the examination is conducted according to the AICPA, it's an attestation engagement. Those standards require that we plan and perform our examination to obtain reasonable assurance about whether in all material respect the description presented and the, the uh, controls stated were suitably designed to provide reasonable assurance that the service organization, service commitment, and system requirements were achieved based on the applicable trust services criteria. We believe the evidence we obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a reasonable basis. Then this is a type one. Type two, what we add is it's not only description and suitability, we also we are also testing the operated, operated effectiveness of the control. Service auditor's responsibilities, then here we explain what an examination would include and we'll have a list of the examination, obtaining an understanding of the system and service organization commitment and system requirement, assessing the risk, performing procedures to obtain evidence about whether the description presented in accordance with the description criteria, we have to do that, performing procedures to obtain evidence whether controls stated in the description were suitably designed, remember we're passing a judgment about the description and the suitability of the controls, evaluating the overall presentation of the description. SOC 2, basically the same except what we do in SOC 2, we test the operating effectiveness of control. So in addition to all of that, we test the operating effectiveness of the control and this is what makes it a SOC 2 type 2. Inherent limitation, basically just like the same inherent limitation for SOC 1 type 1, SOC 1 type 2, SOC 2 type 2, and SOC 2 type 1, to a great degree the same limitation. Well, what we can say is the description is prepared to meet the common need of a broad range of report users and may not therefore include every aspect of the system that individual user may consider important to meet their informational need. So the first limitation is we cannot cover everything. That's one thing. There are inherent limitations in a system of internal control, and we should know this, including the possibility of an error committed by the people who are working there, circumvention of control by management, where the management override the control, <clears throat> and also what we always have to mention in the inherent limitation, the projection of future, of to the future of any conclusion about the suitability of the design is subject to the risk that control may become inadequate because the changes in condition or that the degree of compliance with policies and procedures may deteriorate. That's important. We always have to let the users know that, okay, we're telling you that the description and the suitability of the controls are um, fa fairly presented today, but we cannot make a judgment about the future. We can only talk about this day. And the reason is, well, the company may not be in compliance or it could be human errors, uh, management overrides, so on and so forth. In a SOC 2 type 2, also we have an inherent limitation, but here what we have to talk about because we're testing the, operate, the operating effectiveness of the control because of their nature, control may not always operate effectively. Again, we're projecting about the future, but we have to be specific about the operating effectiveness because remember, a type SOC 2 type 2, type 2 is for a period of time. Uh, also, the projection to the future of any conclusion about the suitability, same concept. We cannot make any future statement. In a type 1 report, we have other matter paragraph, and in this other matter, we kind of specify this is not a type 2. We did not perform any procedures regarding the operating effectiveness of the control. Then we have the opinion. Again, the opinion as of a particular date about the description and about the suitability of the control applicable to trust services criteria, since this is a SOC 2. In a SOC 2 type 2, what we have is, rather than saying other matter, what we're going to say, we're going to say description of test of controls. On the contrary, we're going to specify what we did. The specific control we tested and the nature of timing and results of these tested are listed in section XX, a separate, separate section. In our opinion, 
in all material respect we tested the description for a period of time the suitability of the control for throughout the period for whatever that period of time is and the control stated in the description operated effectively we also tested the operating effective look for all three for a period of time now we have to restrict SOC 2 report basically the same for type 1 and type 2 so this report is intended solely for the information and use of KLM user entities obviously the user entities of KLM could be many that's one obviously KLM itself the company itself they get a report and the auditors of the user entities user entity or user entities could be many entities so we have to restrict this report and they would say and we will add and we talked about those the nature of the service how the service plan interact with other entities so on and so forth this report is intended solely for these groups and business partners prospective user entities and business partners and regulators have sufficient knowledge and understanding of the following so if you want to use this report you have to have knowledge you have to have knowledge if you're outside this group you have to have knowledge it's not intended for you but if you want to use it you have to have knowledge of the nature of service provided by service organization how the service organization system interact with user entities business partners subservice organization and other parties internal control and its limitation user entity responsibilities and how they may affect the user entity's ability the applicable trust service criteria so if you're any of outside of these groups you have to know all of this well, we assume that these groups also know all about this. But we, we also classify, uh, qualify the report is not, forget about the word qualify, we, we specify that the report is not intended to be or should not be used by anyone other than those specified peer parties, which are these parties. Because the assumption is they are aware and understand of all the following bulleted point. Then what we do is we sign date uh, service auditor city and state and we call it for the day now again what i went over is SOC 2 type 1 and type 2 back to back bear in mind that we have opinions other than unqualified and we mentioned when do we when do we uh, when do we issue those qualified adverse and disclaimer we're going to look at these reports later on just keep that in mind as you're going through SOC 1, SOC 2, important concept for the CPA information systems and controls section. Go to Farhat Lectures, complete MCQs, complete your work so you can do better, perform well on the CPA exam. Good luck, invest in yourself and stay safe.